great comments. So uh, before we close, I'd at least like to talk about the agents that are available in this class that we call TIRF, T-I-R-F, Transmucosal Immediate Release Fentanyl Products. Uh, we've been referring to them as rapid onset agents. Uh, they're mostly or all that we're about to talk about fentanyl agents. You all remember that fentanyl is a very lipid soluble opioid, crosses through that blood brain barrier very readily and I assume it's why most of these products are fentanyl based because it's rapid acting uh, as far as an analgesic goes. There are a number of different delivery systems uh, available. Uh, the original one, uh, maybe Jerry tell us about the original one. Well, the original one um, was oral transmucosal fentanyl citrate, or ACTIC as it is called now. Um, and um, it was a rapid acting uh, lozenge on a stick that the patient would roll inside their buccal mucosa in order to raise their blood levels and then stop when their pain was relieved. Um, one of the roles for the nurse particularly was the fact that education on how to use the drug was, was critical. Um, and then how to rescue later if that did not work sure. in, the, in the clinical trial. So um, good responses for a number of patients, um, especially with those bursts of pain that were so um, impeding of their lives. Of course. And that original lozenge on a stick basically laid the foundation for this whole category of medicines. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it was great, no question about it. But for those chronic survivors, we saw there were some, there were some detrimental effects. A lot effects. of dental visits. Dental visits, a sugar-coated lozenge against the side of the teeth every day. So, so other issues, which, which spurred the onset of some newer products. There are tablet preparations. There's a fentanyl sublingual tablet. There's a fentanyl buccal tablet. Each of those are, are, uh, are available and, and have, uh, you know, uh, I'd have to say amongst the class, probable, probably comparable efficacy. Uh, Mark, you use any of those tablet products? Yeah, I think for the cancer population that I, that I deal with, I would say that the sublingual tablet is very useful. I, I use it initially with some of the esophageal, gastric, and head and neck cancer patients. And the, the area where the absorption is is relatively untouched by the mucositis from the radiation. Um, I just find that to be the, the most helpful in most of my cancer patients because of the drug delivery system. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, both the tablets are relatively small. Uh, one goes under the tongue, the other is for inside the buccal mucosa, which I, I believe uh, they also now have an indication now they for, sub for sublingual, for sublingual as well. As well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Vitaly, there's also two sprays that I know about. One is a sublingual spray, one is an intranasal spray. How do you think patients might feel about uh, using a spray technology for their, for their breakthrough pain? Um, I have to admit that I don't have personal experience with these sprays. Um, <clears throat> you have to be careful uh, educating the patient, obviously. Um, this is a very, um, as you alluded to, it's a very quick onset, it's a very powerful, one of the most powerful uh, opioid analgesics that is available. Um, the patient uh, have to wait for response before uh, delivering to themselves the next spray. Um, the, uh, we're going to talk uh, later in our discussion. Uh, the physicians themselves need to be very knowledgeable educating the patient. Sure. I mean, well, let's talk about it now. Knowledge, uh, knowledge on the part of the physician or the clinician or, or the prescriber. Well, let's put it out there on the table. You cannot prescribe these medications without taking a a short course and passing it. And as a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy, also known as REMS, for these trans, uh, transmucosal immediate release fentanyl products, so it's called TERF REMS. So um, that was a measure taken by our government to help ensure some measure of safety in, from, from those who are prescribing. So we think that there's such a safety message, an educational message behind these TERF products that the government mandated this TERF REMS program so that clinicians could learn about the products. But if you all, all probably are part of the TERF REMS, you understand that when a patient comes in and you decide on one of these agents, there's a patient provider treatment agreement that you read and sign and the patient reads and signs. And the pharmacy has to be enrolled to be a, a distributor of these particular products. And at each step along the way, there's mandatory education for everyone involved, for the clinicians, for the patients, for the pharmacists. So to promote the safe use, that's the, the purpose of having a REMS, a, a risk mitigation strategy program. 
So hopefully our, our uh, uh, audience knows about turf REMS and how to register. You can go to turfremsaccess.com or turfremsprogram.com. We'll make sure to get you that, uh, uh, that address uh, before the end of our program. Uh, so let's go on to talk about if you decide on one of these agents. And just to mention one other oh, thing, please. you know, there's a REMS program for a lot of our oncologics that we use also. So it's for the oncologists out there, it's the same REMS type of strategy for these opioids as it is for some of the uh, um, myeloma therapies that we use. Sure. Just to make a correlate. Uh, let's talk about how you might dose one of these products, whether you choose the fentanyl nasal spray or whether you choose the fentanyl sublingual spray or the buccal tablet or the sublingual tablet or even the actic lozenge. Um, how might you start a patient on one of these agents? Mark. Um, so for the sublingual tablet, um, there's very, you know, expressed instructions on how to start at a 100 microgram tablet. You must spend time with the patient to go over the titration schedule because there is a titration schedule and then once you find the appropriate dose, that's called the maintenance dose. So it's a lot of a very important times, you know, speaking with the patient on how to appropriately go from one to two to three over the course of, you know, an hour to two hours per the interval as discussed on the P on the package insert. And it's Jerry, a lot of time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. Jerry, is it like other opioids where you start low and, and go, go slow, slow. Yes. or start low and titrate progressively? Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your experience with titrating these products. Um, it, well, as, as Mark said, it starts low and then you uh, escalate the drug based on response um, to the analgesic as well as side effects. Um, and, and then hopefully get to pain relief for that patient. Of course. You know what I found is in my practice, these are cancer patients with breakthrough pain. I like to find that dose as quickly as possible but I like to find that dose as safely as oh, possible. Yeah, absolutely. So I would counsel our audience that if you're going to pick one or two of these products, become savvy or fluent with the label, with the package insert, know how to dose them, start low, how to titrate them, can you use two units at a time, how long do you need to wait between taking the next dose, and each of the package inserts is a little bit different with how they can, how they can titrate uh, and, and where they should start. You know, I'd like to bring up a point that we kind of touched on a little bit. Uh, you know, doctors are very familiar with fentanyl, especially transdermal fentanyl. Uh, you know, the majority of primary care physicians and pain specialists, oncologists, I even seen the orthopedists use them, the rheumatologists, everyone's familiar with fentanyl. The turf products have a long history of efficacy. Uh, I think we have a pretty, you know, robust data series on safety as well. We know that there's some sensitivities around prescribing them. Uh, Vitaly, why aren't more docs prescribing this class of drug. Let me take even one step further. Why aren't more physicians enrolling in the TERF REMS program to, to educate themselves about this class of medication? Well, I think it's a, it's a kind of a broad question. And the answer, my answer will be somewhat broad. We as physicians are inundated by multiple requirements, CME requirements, electronic medical records, and so forth. So unless the physician who is about to start this new medication feels that these medications are beneficial and really needed to his patient population, his or her patient population, they are somewhat reluctant to take yet another test. I who took this test, I can tell you that it's really not that time consuming. You do learn certain things, even as a pain physician I learned certain things. Um, and uh, the, the question portion is not uh, that difficult. I think that makes you more aware and overall uh, you uh, start a, a safer prescription practices by taking this test. So m my take on this that if you think that this is beneficial to your patient, this test by itself should not be the deterrent which decides whether to prescribe these medications or not. It almost sounds like if you believe in the concept of breakthrough pain, especially in the cancer population, and you're going to consider the use of these rapid onset opioids, that applying for the turf REMS and taking the 10 question test, doing the assessment, as you say, is a safety measure. It educates you about the safe use of the product. Now, Mark, being the token oncologist here, uh, I want to pick on you, your specialty a little bit. I've chatted with my own oncologists who say, I don't want to sign up for the TERF REMS program. 
How do I make some headway in the oncology world? It's very, it's very difficult. I've been trying with my own colleagues in my own practice. But um, I think that it's invaluable once you get your feet wet and see how you do make an impact in the patient's quality of life, that that will then open up and the physician would then understand the impact of what you know going on in uh, signing into a turf REMS means. Jerry, how about your practice? Does, uh, does what Mark says hold true? If a patient comes back and says, my life is better, right? I finally have a medicine that matches my timing of pain. It works fast enough to control my pain. Does that influence the prescribers? Um, I, I think it does. However, the, my situation working in an oncology clinic was that we did the clinical trials with the original uh, fentanyl product. So um, everybody wanted to, to get on board after the study was done. So I think my situation was probably a little bit different. Yeah. Charles, you think it's efficacy that, uh, that clinicians are worried about? Is it safety? Like, why, why aren't more doctors addressing this important class of drug? I don't think it's efficacy. And I think you made the point already that um, doctors who may be more um, willing to or comfortable and familiar with prescribing transdermal fentanyl, um, the patch that's used for chronic pain, may not have the same experience or comfort level with the immediate release fentanyl products. I think that one issue is the safety, that they, that the, the safety concerns that they may have. The stakes are a little bit different in their minds. Um, another issue is they're not familiar with them. They don't have, and I think uh, you just made a very good point about your, your, your group was very, very eager because they had familiarity and, and we do practice medicine. And how do you learn how to practice medicine with all due respect to the eight or 10 question test that doesn't give you empirical, which by definition is based on observation, evidence about how your patients are going to do. And so there's a learning curve. And so I think that, you know, Mark points out how rewarding uh, that learning curve can be in terms of being able to better navigate and help your patients with their pain complaints. Um, but I think that there's that threshold of concern, um, mostly about safety. Um, will, I, will I do something wrong? Um, I'm being monitored, uh, not efficacy though. And I would recommend to our viewers to log into the web and read about the Turf Rems program, read the educational material that comes along with, these, uh, with, with this program per se, uh, and decide for yourselves if this is the class of medications that you'd like for your patients.